What's up everyone? So there's been quite a few updates to the PlayStation Vita scene lately, and today I'm going to talk about one of the biggest breakthroughs in the Vita scene since Henkaku was released last year. And that is with the latest release of Vita Shell, we now have the option of mounting USB storage on PlayStation TV devices. The worst thing about the Vita and the PlayStation TV is that they rely on those proprietary Sony memory cards, which are highly expensive, and they also have quite a high failure rate too. With this latest update to Vita Shell, we now have the option of mounting USB hard drives, USB flash drives, and even SD cards and USB adapters. Not only does this mean we have much cheaper storage available to us, but it also gets us past the 64 gigabyte limit, which was the highest size of a memory card we could get. I've even seen screenshots of people mounting two terabyte hard drives to their PlayStation TVs with this update. So this is really some great news. So all you need to get started is a PlayStation TV running 3.60 firmware in Henkaku. I'll show you guys now how you can update Vita Shell to the latest version and get started with USB mass storage. So the first thing you'll need to do on your PlayStation TV is start up the Henkaku exploit. And once you have Henkaku running, just go ahead and start up Vita Shell. Now, as long as you're connected to Wi-Fi, Vita Shell should actually go out and check for the latest updates. And we can see here it's prompted me to update to the latest version, which is 1.61 at the time of this upload. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose yes now to update to the latest. 1.60 was the version which actually released USB mass storage but there were quite a few bugs, so 1.61 is the version you want so that everything goes smoothly. Great, so I can see that my Vita shell has now updated to the latest 1.61, which is what we want. If you don't have Vita shell on your PlayStation TV, if you only have molecular shell, I'll put a link in the description so that you can download the vitashell.vpk file, and then if you enable unsafe home brew in molecular shell, you'll be able to install the Vita Shell VPK and it'll get you where you need to be here. So once that's done and you have Vita Shell 1.61 installed, the next thing you'll need to do is insert some USB storage. So a USB flash drive or a micro SD card and a USB adapter can plug directly into the USB port without needing anything else. But if you're going to attach a USB external hard drive that doesn't have its own external power supply, you'll probably need what's known as a Y cable. One port, the data port, plugs into the PlayStation TV, and the second port will need to go into a USB hub to get more power. The reason for that is the PlayStation TV doesn't put out enough power through its USB port to power the entire external hard drive. If your external hard drive has its own power supply that you plug into the wall, it's not gonna need that. You'll be able to just use the one USB port. But for all other external hard drives, you'll probably need a Y cable or a powered USB hub, something like that. So once you have your USB storage attached, in Vita Shell, just push the triangle button to open up this menu and then choose Mount UMAO, which is Mount USB Mass Storage and push X. So you can see here it now says UMAO mounted. And I can see here my micro SD 16 gigabyte card has been recognized just like that. So it's important to note that your USB storage will need to be either formatted as FAT32 or XFAT file types. If your drive is not formatted as FAT32 or XFAT, it won't be recognized by the PlayStation TV. So once you've mounted your memory stick as UMAO, you can use it as external storage. But another option you have is you can actually mount USB to UXO. Now, UXO is your memory card normally, but what this allows you to do is mount your USB storage as if it was your memory card. So then all homebrew or all things that require a memory card will actually just look at the USB storage instead of the normal proprietary memory card, which is pretty cool. Eventually the screen refreshes like this. And now it says USB has been mounted as UXO. And indeed I can see that my USB storage is now set up as UXO. But if I quit out of Vita Shell, I can still see all of my normal bubbles, which are stored on my memory card. If I was to try to launch something here, let's see what happens. Indeed, it's unable to recognize things I had installed on my memory stick because they are not yet on my USB storage. So at the moment, my home screen is showing a whole bunch of bubbles which aren't installed on my USB storage. If I decide I want to have my memory stick mounted again, I can just come back to Vita Shell 
and choose unmount USB as UXO. You can see it switches straight back to having USB at UMAO and UXO, or my memory card basically as the default. And with that done, my installed applications to the memory card should work again as normal. And indeed I can see my normal homebrew working again. One of the major benefits of doing it this way is that you can copy your VPK files or my dumps straight over to the USB drive on your computer without needing to use the Vita to do that. So for example, I'll just reconnect my USB storage here and I've sent a backup of Final Fantasy X 2 directly to the storage from my computer. So that just saves the time of having to transfer it to the Vita. So what I'll do is I'll mount the USB as my memory card which takes a few seconds to do. Now that it's mounted, I can browse through to my VPK folder. Here I've sent the game. So I'll go ahead and install Final Fantasy X 2 here from my USB drive. And since my USB drive is mounted, it's gonna install it directly to my USB drive as if it was my memory card. Okay, so with that game finished installing, I can quit out of Vita Shell here now, find my new game, and it should start right up. So I can see my USB drive flashing away there. So it's essentially the exact same as playing a game from a memory card. Only difference is it's loaded from the USB memory stick. In my opinion, this is one of the biggest breakthroughs since Henkaku was released, as this allows us to boycott the proprietary Sony memory cards, which are incredibly expensive and also have a reasonably high failure rate. Not only that, but they're limited at 64 gigabytes in size. With this new release from the Flow, we can mount USB storage and I've seen people mounting up to two terabytes in file size so instead of just having your favorite games installed you can have hundreds of Vita games installed on USB storage so that's incredible. I have to give full credit to the Flow for his hard work on this release he really is an amazing contributor to the Vita scene and we have and can't give enough thanks to him for all the work that he's done for our devices. If you're looking at purchasing a USB device to make use of this with your PlayStation TV the highest performance thing you could purchase would be an external SSD hard drive. Next in the list would just be a regular external USB hard drive that uses magnetic storage rather than a solid state drive. A little bit cheaper, a little bit noisier and a little bit slower than an SSD. And the third best option would just be a standard USB flash drive or memory stick as some people call them. They're good because they can plug right in and get enough power but it won't be as fast as an actual USB hard drive. Although if you purchased a high quality brand of USB flash storage, which is advertised as high speeds of read and write, chances are it might come pretty close to a USB hard drive in speed. <laughs> Gotta give a shout out to this Final Fantasy X 2 undub. That's another really cool thing about Henkaku is it'll let you play games with undubs so you can have the Japanese audio if the English voice acting sucks. <laughs> so that about wraps things up for this video. I'm really happy that I've been able to talk about USB mass storage finally and we now have a way of installing games without needing to rely on the Sony memory cards. Personally, I think I'm going to shoot out and buy maybe about a 500 gigabyte external and just have it sitting with my PlayStation TV at all times. Thanks to this release, I really feel that the PlayStation TV is totally worth it for any Vita fan. Obviously now you can have much more storage through them, as well as it giving you the ability to play games over HDMI and on your big screen. I've got some more amazing news to cover for the Vita in the next few days. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing. Hope you're keeping well. Peace out guys.